Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Cliff Killer Large Siege Bow. Uh, this is an exceptional level bow and uh, it is an interesting one because it has some kind of interesting effects. Um, the Large Siege Bow is not, I think, one of the most popular bases for the, uh, for the bow category. But, uh, yeah, well, it is what it is. Um, it does have a two-handed damage of 43 to 168, which is actually pretty sweet for a level 41 bow. Uh, it has a dex requirement of 95 and a strength requirement of 80, which are not too bad. Um, we also have a fast attack speed because the Cliff Killer is, of course, a, uh, I think it's a zero speed bow. Uh, let me double check that real quick here. Uh, large Siege Bow, no, it's a 10. So it's the slowest bow class um, in the game right there with the the Gothic Bow, the Hydra Bow. Um, and if you compare the two, the average damage of the Large Siege Bow is definitely lower than the damage of the uh, Gothic Bow. The Gothic Bow has an average damage of 30, and the uh, Cliff Killer, or sorry, the Large Siege Bow has an average damage of 26, uh, which is probably the reason why people choose the Gothic Bow over the Large Siege Bow whenever they're choosing uh, for sockets or like a rude word or anything like that. Um, we also have plus two Amazon skills on here, which is, of course, very, very nice. Um, it's it, always nice to have plus skills on a bow. Um, and having plus two on a bow this low is actually exceedingly nice uh, because it gives you plus two to all your skills, including your critical strike, your penetrate, your Valkyrie, you know, your dodges, your avoids, your evades, uh, whatever it is that you're using, including your bow skills, of course. Um, you know, it's, it's very nice to have plus two Amazon skills. Uh, we also have 230% enhanced damage on this bow, which is very high, especially for exceptional level uniques, and uh, is actually in competition with some of the other bows um, that a lot of people like to use. For instance, uh, Wind Force only has 250%. It also has the max damage mechanic, but it only has 250% enhanced, whereas Cliff Killer has 230. So very close to the same enhanced damage that the Wind Force has. Um, and something like the Eagle Horn, which is an elite version, has only 200% enhanced, whereas this has 230. So we are looking at a bow that does have a slightly higher enhanced damage than some of the other bows in the same category. Um, now, this particular bow also has the very nice mechanic that just simply adds damage directly to the bow, so 10 to 30 damage. Unfortunately, this is a variable. Both the min and the max roll. So the minimum mat rolls between 5 to 10, and the maximum rolls between 20 to 30. So to find a perfect version of this bow, um, you would have to find a 10 to 30 damage enhanced. And the enhanced damage itself also varies from 190 to 230%. Um, so we have a pretty big variable here in the damage, especially if you end up with a relatively low enhanced damage with a relatively low min-max bonus. Um, both of those can very quickly equate to a cliff killer that you'd probably be better off not using. Uh, because if you end up with only 5 to 20 enhanced min, and then you end up with only not 190% enhanced damage, uh, you, the damage goes down very quickly from 43 to 168 to something more like 34 to 141, which uh, other bows could probably compete with. Uh, we also have a native knockback on this bow, which honestly for bows is a good thing. Um, you generally want knockback um, as an Amazon because honestly, you don't really want to fight things in melee range. And when monsters get close to you in melee range, it's obviously a bad thing. It is not a good thing when monsters get up close in your face and start punching you. And uh, let's let's test it out real quick, shall we? So we've got uh, a group of monsters here. Let's see how well we can keep them away from us using something like uh, our multi-shot. Of course, once they get into each other, and I've always noticed this, especially with knockback, if you get knockback a monster if there's a monster behind the monster that you're trying to knock back. The other thing here is that it doesn't work on super uniques. Uh, knockback um, usually doesn't work on super uniques anyway. Uh, it definitely doesn't work on bosses, but um, it is also random, and uh, having multiple knockback effects can certainly enhance that. Um, and this is Hell Difficulty. Uh, I believe it's in players... I always forget what player count I'm on until I go check. Players 5. That's not bad for players 5. That's actually not bad at all for a large siege bow. Um, and this is going to be upgraded later, so we're definitely going to get a little bit more damage out of this. So we'll see what we end up with when it goes to its higher form. 
Um, on top of the knockback, we also get defense versus missile, which is kind of just like a mediocre stat. It's not really particularly high. Of course, we are a ranged character, so having defense versus missile is not a bad thing, but it's not something that people are going to specifically seek out. Uh, we also have plus 50 life on here, which is a pretty large amount of life. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. 50 life is actually pretty sweet. Uh, don't pay attention to my 8,491 life. This is a test character. Um, the, the, she's even named Test Amazon. Okay, she's her entire purpose is just to test things. She's not here to, to survive. She's got unlimited survivability. Don't worry about her. As you can see, she has salvation and defiance aura on under her feet at the same time. Um, if you want to be, if you want to do stuff like that, I actually do have an item pack. Uh, if you want to download it, it is a, a hero editor item pack where you could do all sorts of cool things like that, and you can make your character have every aura in the game and shoot lasers out of his arsehole uh, if that's what you'd like him to do. Um, now, as far as a level 41 bow goes, Cliff Killer is actually pretty impressive. Um, Damage-wise, it is extremely high. Knockback on the bow, natively, is actually very nice. And plus two to Amazon skills is also pretty good. Um, it doesn't really have anything like, super special, though. Like It doesn't have like open wounds or crushing blow or deadly strike or like a specific skill. It doesn't give you any kind of special arrows to fire. And it is really kind of just used by Amazons. Um, so it's kind of important to look at it specifically from an Amazon kind of point of view. I do feel like this could be a very interesting bow for a elemental damage character just simply because it does have plus two to skills along with knockback. I mean, granted, it's not going to give you any special effects to your like freezing arrow or exploding arrow or anything, but it will give you plus two skills, which is of course nice. And it does have a really high amount of physical damage, which could certainly be useful, um, you know, for life steal, mana steal, and things like that. Um, it also seems like it would be a very interesting choice for a multi-shot guided arrow or strafe zone, um, specifically because of the high physical damage and would probably work really well with magic arrow as well I would imagine uh, because magic arrow of course converts your physical damage into elemental damage why does it only do that because I don't have the bow on you're not gonna let me change the skill uh, so as you can see here, we're doing 312 to 1,129 magic damage, um, which it's actually, uh, what is it, 73% magic damage, so it's not completely magic damage, but it will bypass most physical immunes um, very well. Um, you could also theoretically use this bow pretty well with um, two other skills um, known as Fire Arrow, which is also a conversion ability, and... Ice Arrow, uh, or yeah, Cold Arrow, which is also a conversion ability. 71% conversion to the uh, Fire or Ice element, depending on which one. And it also adds a rather hefty amount of cold damage on top. Um, so it's an interesting way to build a physical damage character that converts the physical damage into elemental damage. Um, let's upgrade this and let's see what kind of effect it gets as a higher tier bow, shall we? So this is going to go from the large siege bow at 43 to 168 damage, 95 dexterity, 80 strength, level 41, to the crusader's bow at 59 to 237, not bad, 121 dex, 97 strength, level 64. Um, that's actually a really nice little upgrade there, I'm not going to lie. The damage on this bow is actually pretty nice, and the knockback on it is pretty sweet, too. Um, if we were to compare this to something like Windforce, though, I'm sure it's not going to outperform the ridiculous plus max damage that's on the uh, Windforce. Uh, but we are looking at a higher minimum damage. Uh, let me switch this back to like something like multi-shot. Why not? Um, so we are looking at a higher minimum damage by quite a bit, so 235 to 386, but a much lower maximum damage at 1,561. Um, it does seem like this bow kind of is more pointed at a, a nightmare character, um, and uh, on top of that, it with the plus, the skills could certainly be more useful for an elemental damage character, I think, uh, just simply because... It gives them physical damage along with giving them plus the skills, where a lot of the other bows have a much lower physical damage um, in combination with the other effects. Um, it's not a particularly fast bow either, and you probably would want to put a shale rune in it to speed it up. Um, and that's another big downside of this bow, because a lot of the other bows do have increased attack speed on them. Um, in some form or another, 
and uh, this isn't exactly the fastest base either. So right off the bat, we're already on a slow base, and we don't have any increased attack speed with this base, which can be an issue. And if you stack on enough increased attack speed, you're certainly not going to have any issues. But uh, just for instance, this is players five just firing multi-shot. Um, as you can see, it's not particularly a terrible bow as far as damage is concerned. Um, not bad at all. I mean, granted, this character does have some pretty OP equipment on. I believe she's using, um, yes, she's using G-Face. Um, she's got uh, the you know Fortitude on. She's got Laying of Hands. Um, she's running Gore Riders. Uh, so she's got some nice Crushing Blow, Open Wounds, and Deadly Strike going on here. And then, you know, of course, as an Amazon, she already has a relatively high Critical Strike anyway, so she's dishing out pretty nice double damage. Obviously, the... Um, Wind Force would be even better damage than this bow is. Oh, look, a tiara. Pretty. It's a pretty. This is an offline character. I don't even know why I picked it up. I kind of want to see what it looks like, though. It might be cool. Let's go identify it. I can't. Random tiara identification in three, two, one. Hey, look. Plus two Amazon with 8% mana steal and 20 decks. I like it. It's not terrible. Maybe I'll ex... Uh, well, I can't export it from here, can I? All right, so let's take a look and see where we could potentially get ourselves a cliff killer if we wanted to find one of these. Uh, like maybe we're doing a brand new ladder character or something along those lines. And we want to see if we can find one, right? We want to see if we can get our hands on a cliff killer. Um, especially on level when it would actually be useful, which, you know, around level 41, 42, um, that's when we'd really want to get our hands on it and actually use it. Um, we're going to assume about 125% magic find because it's uh, a nightmare level unique. And um, we're going to take a look at bosses first. Um, and let me pull this up so you guys can see it. Uh, so here we are over on Salo's Pen. And as you can see, I've got Cliff Killer, boss, and 125% magic find. Um, we're going to sort by probability and ignore quest flags. And we're looking at Nightmare Diablo is the best possibility at 1 845. Uh, but due to the level of this particular bow, I would not recommend farming that particular monster because at level 41, you're probably not going to be able to farm Diablo at all. Um, so we need to find uh, something that is more toward the beginning of Nightmare difficulty. In fact, let's restrict this to Nightmare. Um, and let's take a look and see what kind of bosses we have within the range of a level 41 character. Um... Duriel has a 1 in 6,898 chance. Um, he's not exactly a good monster for a level 41 character to farm, but uh, definitely much more in range than Diablo, um, which is a lot higher level. Uh, Radiment also has a pretty good chance of dropping this at 1 in 8,360. A little bit harder to farm, obviously, but um, it could be an option if you were just trying to get your hands on this early on in Nightmare. Um, let's take a look at Super Uniques. And what we're going to be looking for is monsters that are lower level monsters. So we've got Storm Tree, which is Act 3. Um, in Lower Karost, he's very easy to find. You just go through the Lower Karost waypoint, go to the entrance to Lower Karost, and he's always at the entrance to Lower Karost. Very easy to find. Um, Witch Doctor and Dugu, not easy to find. Uh, he's at the bottom of Flare Dungeon Level 3, but you're going to kill him anyway on your way, so you might as well check and see if he drops you a Cliff Killer. Um... Ancient Ka the Soulless, extremely hard to find. Um, he is in he is in the false tomb of Tal Rasha. Um, when I say the false tomb of Tal Rasha, I mean the false tomb of Tal Rasha. So there may be many false tombs, but only one of them is fully fleshed out to the point where literally it's a massive, ridiculous maze of of rooms. Uh, Ancient Ka the Soulless is in the biggest false tomb, essentially. All the other false tombs are kind of like small and not really as fleshed out, but the, the ancient Ka the Solus's tomb is literally the same size as Duriel's tomb. Um, we also have Pindleskin and Nightmare. I mean, obviously you can't farm him until you hit Act 5. Fire Eye and Palace Cellar at 1 in 11,000 um, is isn't a bad choice. He's actually really easy to get to. You just go through the Arcade Sanctuary portal and you walk through the portal back to Palace Cellar Level 3, and Fire Eye is always guarding the portal to Palace Cellar Level 3. 
Um, so it's, it's pretty it's very easy to find. Um, Dark Elder in the Lost City is an Act 2. Um, probably a lot easier to farm than Radiment, but uh, a much higher drop chance at 1 in 11,445. And uh, I think that's just about it. Hmm. Not really a lot of good choices. Um, and that's a big issue with Nightmare Little Phoenix, is there's just not really a lot of good choices for these. Um, if you did find one of these, you could obviously twink it to your Amazon, give it to her early on, and she could utilize it. I'm not particularly sure, though, I'd want to give this specific bow to my Amazon over other choices. Um, I mean, the physical damage is very nice for level 41, and as you could see, even in Player's 5 Hell, I was able to dish out a pretty significant amount of damage um, to targets, but uh, it's certainly not going to be better than um, some other choices at endgame. Um, it could potentially be the best choice for a mid-tier character um, if you just wanted a really nice high damage bow. Um, but there is a lot of issues here with this particular bow and um, finding it in good condition. Uh, with the high variable on the min and max and the high variable on the actual physical damage, um, you're probably going to find this in a much poorer condition than the one that I'm showing you, which is basically perfect. Um, so I'm not really sure about that. It really doesn't seem to me like it screams out like any specific build. Um, I kind of feel like any character, any Amazon could get good use out of this bow. And, uh, and any Amazon could utilize this, you know, in Nightmare up to a certain point before they replace it with something else. Um, if you wanted to upgrade it, you could. You'd probably be better off just moving on to one of the elite tier bows. Um, you know, but if you can't find one of those, this would definitely be an interesting choice for a certain period of time. Um, for an Ice Amazon, I feel like Wizen Draw is still the superior choice because of the negative enemy cold resistance. For a Fire uh, Amazon, I would definitely say that Kuko Shaku is probably your better choice. So what this bow actually fills as a, you know, like a spot is kind of uh, an oddity. Um, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, um, even when we are apparently killing cliffs. And as always, keep killing cliffs.